Hello, welcome to The Max Show. Yes, it is post-election day here. No politics taking place now because we have a hung parliament and they're all fighting over who's going to uh, change the toilet roll in the uh, in, in the toilets at, uh, at Parliament Square. So um, we'll all be fine. Uh, joining me to discuss Apple News, and there was a WWDC keynote on Monday. Oh, how good was that? I loved it. It was excellent. Uh, top bunch, top left, starting us off, Doc Rock. Aloha. How you doing, How's brother? everyone doing? Good, man. Good. It's been a uh, crazy week I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to get some money to buy a black iMac. Uh, but but which black iMac? The one that costs five grand or the one that costs 25 grand? Bro, I'm going all, You know me. I got to spec that sucker out. I got to pack We're it to the rim. going to do it. There's no reason to ever buy anything from Apple on the bottom shelf except the watch. I don't get why Apple haven't put that up on the website already so everyone can spec it out to the max and go, what? Yeah, I think uh, the sticker shock would probably freak people out, but you know the rules. Well, we'll, we'll get into it in the show, but you know, you know how the rules go. If you, uh, if, you, if you got it, you buy it. If you don't, shut up and talk about it. Don't piss other people off. Fair point. Uh, next to him is Adam. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, all right, mate. Um, yeah. uh, uh, as the pool saga, is it the pool, the leak? Oh, I don't know. There's always something going on out here. <laughs> you bought, We're all you good. Didn't realize you bought a renovation project, did you? No. Well, no. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's it's home ownership. It's not it's not a renovation project. It's owning a house. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, so right? He does know a lot I mean, about renovation. Is James Rickards, new man on the show? How are you doing, James? I'm very well, thank you, Adam. You're, you're, I'm Ewan, not Adam. Um, it's still my show, mate. Steady on. Um, uh, I'm not letting the lunatics out. Start. I'm not letting the lunatics Good out of the cells just yet. Um, uh, so now you, um, uh, you, you are ex Apple store mate. We've known each other for what six, seven years. Yeah, yeah, been for that long. It's, it's been, yeah, it's been a very on-off relationship, mainly off, I think. Well, no, because you buggered off to France, man. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I've renovated, year, right? renovated a place. Yeah, taking a year out, moved to France. Um, I'm here for a year, but uh, constantly um, changing my mind how long that year is going to be. But yeah, I spent six years, uh, six months doing it up and and uh, loving it. Yeah, kind of reaping the rewards now. It's coming to summer, so happy days. And just for everyone who's listening, you're an ex Apple man as well, aren't you? Same as Doc. Yeah, about to hit my 10 years uh, sort of uh, with Apple and enjoyed every minute. I learned a lot of things, got to see some great places. And um, So are you officially left or are you just a hiatus? No, no, you can't. You, you kind of have to. If you want to take a year off, then you better leave. I think if you want two, three weeks unpaid, then maybe uh, that would be fine. But otherwise, uh, oh, unfortunately, right. you've got to leave, which is a shame. But, you know, they said they have you back, which is nice to know. So uh, obviously did a good job. Yeah, sweeping the floors, though. <laughs> well, they, they did say, you, you know, come back and we'll see what we can do for you. Uh, uh, and last, good. last but my name is least, Brett Terpstra. How you doing, man? The man who throws the cat amongst the pigeons every week on this show. What? I do what? What is that even a <laughs> phrase? The cat amongst the pigeons. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, that. Um. Sure. I'm. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, mate. What's been going on? Um. Is the weather warming up in Minnesota? Are you still getting snow? It is perfect. It's it's been between seventy and eighty and sunny for a couple of weeks now. Good. So you're happy. Yeah, I, live, I live it. I live in the more um, uh, less populated part of the state, and it's beautiful hills. And I have a convertible, and I can go out on county roads and never see another person. It's awesome. Yeah. Not good if you're in Favorite a road time traffic of the accident, year. however, or hit a moose. We are not far enough north for. Mooses, moose, meese. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, just, I think it's moose. just moose still. Yeah, I don't think it. I yeah, think I think, it's think it's moose is singular and plural. Yeah, huh. yeah. No, uh, geese are the uh, only thing this time of year, and mosquitoes they get they get big, bad. <laughs> Hobbs in the chat room is saying that Doc looks like his head is just floating in space. It's a bit Max Headroom because you got a black t-shirt on in a black background. That's racist. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Bronwyn says plural of meese is meese. I believe I believe Bronwyn. Uh, the week in Apple, what's going on? What's been happening? Um, 
I, I will do WDC, but one of the things that did happen this week that was kind of just like really, really silent and just no one said a word. And then you wake up one morning, you get an email from Apple that says, we doubled your storage in iCloud for nothing. There you go. Have two terabytes on us. I love it. Man. I, I probably yeah. would have been like super poo pooey about it had it not been a literally two days prior. I upgraded from the regular plan to the terabyte plan because I just got ever since I got the big phone with the super amount of memory, I kept pushing it to the wall and it'd be like, Broski, you you're at two hundred gigs. You're at two hundred gigs. You're at two hundred gigs. So finally, instead of keep deleting photos or whatever is which isn't bad. It's just that, you know, when you take, uh, like for me, you know, I make something in say the CNC or in a laser and then I want to make a picture for Instagram. I might take 20 pictures of it to get a good one. And then I'll forget to throw the other 19 away, which I don't need, but I never really cared before because my phone has the space. And then iCloud fills up, you know, especially with slow motion or time, you know, time lapses or whatnot. So I just got sick of chasing it. I said, screw it. I just paid an extra couple bucks. I'm like, it's only nine bucks a month. We'll, we'll let it go. So it was kind of nice that they did it for us, but oh, people went mental. Like, oh, why don't the middle people get a speed bump? And I'm like, I don't know. It's not my problem. Step up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> the other thing is that they're going to check in family sharing as well as, which is, I think that's really cool because Ellis literally the day before was giving me shit over the fact that his phone was at the wall because he's got, he's only got 16 gig because I'm a tight bastard. Yep. Tight bastard dad. <laughs> think, yeah, all that secret, all that secret stuff on that slide and you know, the keynote for iOS 11. But we got to wait. Why? Oh, it's, yeah, for it to come. Yeah, but it's going to come. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the, the 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 more interesting, just real quick, the more interesting thing on that story was two days later, Amazon went right in line with Apple's price per terabyte and got rid of their unlimited plan. That's true. See that? man. Yeah, that's the the unlimited plan was uh, was unsustainable. I would have thought as you got further on, but um, but no. Um, uh, now the interesting thing was they only doubled the one terabyte system, didn't they? They didn't double the fifty and the two hundred. They're still the same. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, you know, on, on Reddit, people lost their mind, and I'm like, they really? gave us something free and they didn't give it to you. You're like my sisters when I used to get something from my grandma. Well, how come he got something and you didn't get it? Like, Shut up, girl! I you was... ruined my steez. <laughs> I have to be honest. I was I was a little like when I when I read the story, I did go check, and I was like, oh, that that kind of stinks. I mean, I wasn't super upset about it, but you know, it'd be nice if they if they did it across the board. But whatever. Well, you know what it's like, Adam. It's like when people come in and you know to a retail or whatever is in. There's say uh, like a, a discount that's qualified, you know, for whatever reason. Maybe a state worker, maybe a school uh, student or whatever, and. People are always astonished that the discount on the smallest item might only be 50 bucks, right? So, like, you're buying a MacBook, education discount is 50 bucks. But if you're buying a MacBook Pro fully loaded, education price might be 450 off. And they seem to be mad about it. And I'm like, you're buying the bottom tier where there's not a lot of margin. Like, you're buying the lost leader and you're tripping because the discount is small. Like, just, it's common sense, really. Yeah. James, if you're waiting for someone to ask you to talk, you're going to be there all day. <laughs> I know. I'm, do you know what? It's because I'm not used to listening to podcasts and not jumping in, so thank you. <laughs> it's all right, mate. You've got to speak. In what? You, you don't just... jump in in the car while you're driving. You, 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 get, the truck ana- you get the truck analogy here, mate, because duck talking is like a truck rolling over you. <laughs> <laughs> are, 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 we, so are we moving to, at some point? Are we moving along to... Uh, to, to MacBook updates, and I'm only asking this because I have another storage thing that came up in my community this week. It's it's related to storage, but more directly to to the MacBook. Maybe it is Adam show after all, James. Uh, yeah, go on, then. go on, then. go on, Adam, go go for it, mate. Look at no, 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 I don't know. It's 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 now's the go time on, to bring go, it up. Go, go, if we're going to talk about the computer updates in a little bit, maybe we should talk about oh, it then. So there was new MacBook. Uh, um, the the, the Cable Lake came in basically for the the MacBook Pros, and the MacBook Pro updates reckon it's twenty percent faster. But actually, in real spec, there's not a lot changed more than the graphic card in terms of hardware and the and the processor. But I know that's most of it. But um, still limited to 16 gig and, uh, and that kind of stuff, but a 20% bump of improvement. And I haven't heard anyone complain about the improvement uh, or, or complain about the pros, the um, the productivity and, and performance on the old one. They said it was good. So right. well, I'm running a um, 2016 late uh, a MacBook Pro 15, and I love it. It's just absolute scorcher. I'm doing a lot of YouTube videos at the moment, and the gra- I went for the, uh, the top graphics card on that, and it's just fantastic. Um, 
I mean, it's sad it's already old, but I've only just had it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's a screamer. That my 2016 late, uh, like say, 15 inch MacBook Pro is just brilliant. Uh, I don't see the point of the uh, touch bar. I've not used it other than to turn the volume down. Um, shame, really. Yeah, I, I think the use of the touch bar in some of the apps is counterintuitive as well. It doesn't doesn't work the way I would have expected it to in certain apps. I think what you're going to think of is, especially if people are new to sort of Final Cut or Motion or any sort of Mac app, and they're not used to shortcuts. In other words, they're new to Mac. Uh, I think the touch bar makes complete sense. Um, but for some of use Final Cut and as Motion, as long as probably us guys have, uh, we kind of look down and think, yeah, don't need to use that button right now. <laughs> yeah. But if you're new, it does open up a whole world of possibilities to you. I, I understand where they're coming from, but for someone like myself who's used it for a number of years, it just doesn't make any sense for me at all. Adam, what was your storage issue then around the, the MacBook Pro? Well, I don't have, it's not my storage issue per se. It's just the the immediate reaction I got from, a, you know, a, a small subset of my community around the MacBook updates because Apple updated everything across the board. So it wasn't just the MacBook Pros. It was also the MacBooks got a bump and even uh, all the way down to the MacBook Air. And it, this is a running complaint, but uh, the MacBook folks are really peeved or a segment of them are really peeved that there's not a one terabyte uh, upgrade option that apple's left the top tier you know pay for upgrade storage at at 512 gigabytes for the last few revs and it kind of relates to this storage thing like you know talking about cloud storage or anything else and and why you have a certain segment of the cloud storage people that are a little bit upset is i think you know people are like we constantly use more and more storage we don't we don't need less we don't need the same we always need more so what anytime there's like bumps you get people coming out of the the woodwork saying we want we want more why don't why aren't we getting more and we've seen this with um with the iphone and the ipads as well right so it was nice to see them on the on the ipad pro update also you know up upping the top tier storage options yeah, but you know the hard part is that storage is the transition to the cloud and everybody's not quite there. And yes, I know the one key element of the cloud situation that sucks if you're someone that lives where you have to use like satellite or some other form of internet, you know, that's not as fast as like I'm sitting here at, you know, 300 down and, and 50 up. So cloud storage doesn't bother me. You know, James has got a, his son on a bicycle out the back. <laughs> Comes in a pack of cans, uh, mate. It's, Delivered every Monday, fifty megabytes. He gets, he gets, he gets his internet from the internet man every morning in a bottle. <laughs> in a bottle. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that that part like seems to to mess people up. But I mean at the same token, like the the MacBook does have a one terabyte storage op- option and a two terabyte storage option. No, it's no, just no, that MacBook, people are blocking because Pro, of four hundred and twelve hundred dollars. Ma- MacBook, not MacBook Pro. Uh, oh, the the MacBook, the like twelve inch MacBook. MacBook. No, I'm saying so. The MacBook is in designed for you to do things that should require that kind of storage. It's, it's the a, MacBook. It's, a bit it's of the entry level well. computer, bro. Uh, <laughs> again, this is not me saying no, no, no. this. Yeah. This is people no, who I'm are saying, saying I'm "Look, I, and saying it out loud. I, I, mean, I understand." Let me let me tell you what they're saying because I think this is a valid part of the community. You're you're making that assumption based on how you feel. And I, I've said the same thing back to him. Well, you can get a 13 inch MacBook Pro, you know, with a terabyte of storage. But it's a pound heavier. It's not the same. And they don't have those needs, but they still have the storage needs because guess what? They take photos and their photo camera gets larger every everything. And yes, they want to carry their whole library around. And no, they don't want cloud storage. You know, they're not interested in iCloud photo library. They don't trust it. They don't like it. Whatever it might be. So, so I'm not saying. Use it. By you know, now, by, uh, all I'm this. saying is that there there is a it, it is an interesting thing, and I get that there's other solutions, but not everybody wants those solutions, and they would like other options. And you're holding up the SD card because that's the that's another thing on the MacBooks. There used to be a slot, right, when you had the MacBook Air or whatever it was. So, and you can buy a terabyte, you know, uh, SD card now, but you don't have that option either, right? 
Yeah, so, so use it. I'm just I grabbed it because it was close. Use a USB stick. I mean, I have a USB three like super fast stick. It doesn't weigh anything. Just stick it on the side. Mark, Shut hey, up. Hey, you're hey, you're hey. giving the same arguments that I will send them back in emails, and what I get in response is just super angry emails back. You're an asshole. Like well, you, you don't talk, understand. Talk you don't get it. So I'm playing that role for them right now because they're not here to do that. No, talk and, to Brett. And I'm saying I I dismissed them and I pushed them off because you know I would say why not just get a. a a USB three SSD. You can get as big a one as you want. It, they're small. They're portable. The USB powered. And then it's like, well, I don't want a bunch of dongle crap off of my super thin, super light, you know, notebook. <laughs> and and at the end at the end of the day, what is stopping Apple from from offering that option? Like, what's, like what's there's like, not a technical problem. There's not a there's not a space problem. That's yeah, like you, that's you like have buying a an problem. apartment. That's got a really compact kitchen because you prefer to work in a compact kitchen, and then complaining you can't put a big freezer in it. It's it, it is that analogy. It, it's it's like I bought this thing because I wanted to light and traveling around with it. There is an option that I can buy that makes it heavier, but I don't want it heavier. Um, and I want it to be like a TARDIS in terms of its functionality compared to its form factor. There, there here's is, here's the thing. There's other there's other machines that are as slim as light that run a different operating system that. Allow buy for that. it, buy it in yeah. STFU. Yeah, well, so there is there, no again. <laughs> it's like saying there's, a, but there's another car that goes faster. We'll buy the other car. <laughs> the holler bag. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> it's. No, it's I, know you guys I know you can't that, reply though. that. You're not going to go run Windows, right? So we deal with it, and and so we're the people who deal with it and go fine. I'll I'll deal with a pound heavier, even though I don't really want it, but it's my only option. So that's what I'm going to buy. And I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to complain see, about it. And I part, get bro. it. I get we're, we're it. Believe old me. School computer I'm not, guys. this is not my argument. I'm, I'm a hundred percent on your guys. We know, we know, we know. I understand I it, but I just but, wanted but to throw it out there. We're old school computer guys, sir. We're used to like, where none of this existed. And the people don't even know how to enjoy the Marvel. That is a computer. Like, do you realize you carry the entire library of Congress in your pocket? And it's, it's available while you're having a pinch. You know, like you're you have a device that allows you to take pictures that doesn't require going to the photo mat and put it up with the snarky goth chick that's in the little box when you drop off your photos. And then she comes back and be like, oh, sorry, half your role was overexposed. You can't fix it. And that event's gone. So you, nothing you can do about it. Like people don't even know how to enjoy the Marvel that, that we have right now. Because they like to look for something to complain for. I'm sorry, like I don't have passion for them. No, no, no I, I, we're not. Some people don't know how airplanes work. You know, some people don't yeah. know how airplanes work. It's still a marvel to them. You know, you just can't please all the people all the time. I think that's what we got to learn from this. Well, and you should just realize, hey, I'm sitting in a chair flying at 600 miles an hour, 40,000 <laughs> feet off the air. That in itself is amazing. Like, think about insane. it for a second. Instead of being mad that the in-flight movie system died. <laughs> Wasn't that a exactly. Louis C.K. Exactly. bit? <laughs> exactly, exactly where I heard it from. I mean, my and, grandmother. But it makes sense. My grandmother it was does. alive when Orville and Wilbur took off the ground, and she died when the space shuttle flew um, uh, at eighty-one. And and you think about Orville and Wilbur didn't fly the length of the first-class cabin in a in a seven four seven in terms of their their flight in inverted commas. So um, somewhere that's that's you know, and then she saw them just leave the ground. And the space shuttle, a returning vessel from space. And that's pretty amazing. But it doesn't take away from the fact that Apple don't make the computer that you wanted. <laughs> Getting back Someone to told point. me the other day that what they appreciate about me is that every time that a question comes up and, you know, I don't have the answer, I say, hey, Siri. Sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> I, I say it and, and I ask the question. And when the answer comes back, I always say, oh, my God, how cool is that? Can you believe that uh, I can actually have this answered before we even get out of the car instead of having to go to the library and look it up? I'm old. But, you, well, you're talking to Anna right. for, for whom the Siri experience has not been great in the last few years. So, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, my, uh, if That's you said fair, that with, but I'm with, talking with about Amazon technology. Echo, Ewan's a Siri Marvel. hater. I'm not a Siri hater. I, I want Siri to work because it would change my life brilliantly. I, I'm, 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 I'm really rooting for Siri just, because it might come. Just substitute difference. Alexa and carry on, Ewan. That's, I wish. That's the point. I wish. But yeah, let's hope the home I'm not, I can't believe be that I'm the one that traditionally gives Apple shit, but I'm going to stand up from here. You know, you make a product lineup, you sell it to people, and you offer it to people. You tell them what it can do, and if they don't want that, then okay, that's fine. Right. And that's all. That's that's all there is to it. And and you know, there's a few comments. 
coming from uh, the chat room, one of which is, I bought a Mini Cooper and now I'm pissed off it won't seat 10 people. There's <laughs> a JC Cooper works even better. Yeah, no. I, I think I, again, not my argument, just no, no, the reaction that, that came up that a, there was a, and it was, it was a, more than one person, you know, it was several people emailed me separately, the same exact reaction. And I just thought it was interesting. I think when I bought my MacBook air, I mean, my air is one terabyte hard drive and it, it's the top pro it's an i7 processor. And I really maxed it out and I went to the max on absolutely everything. And if there'd been a right. higher max, I would have taken it. Um, is it enough for me to do day to day work on? No, it's not, but that's not what I used it for anyway. And I still use it now, even though it's nearly three years old and it's brilliant. Uh, it's, it's more than three years old and, it, and it's brilliant. Um, my professional computer over here that I need an SSD or an SD card reader for, um, I have to use a, a transcend plugged on the back end of, of a USB that goes into USB 3 reader. And, you know, why hasn't a pro machine got an SD card reader or a compact flash reader? Well, because there isn't room because they're just, that's just not the spec that it was made to. Right. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I, there's no, no win conversation with that, mate. I think you've lost a few listeners, that's all we'll say. No, well, and you know, the, the funny part is, like, is, is if that person, in most cases, if you have those kind of people and you could take all the specs of the new unreleased iMac Pro and stuff it into a one-pound notebook, they would find something wrong with it, especially if you had to put it at what we assume would be the, the uh, perceived price of an 18 core fully loaded Xeon. Like if you could stuff all of that into that little form factor, people would still be not happy. Like, oh, I can't believe it cost 20 grand. And I'm right. like, yeah. Right. Sorry, Let's just I mean, I'll tell people are just, still just, upset just, about their <laughs> optical drives. Yeah. True that, that was the True biggest that. deal. Everyone was up in <laughs> arms. And I mean, eventually we'll right. say the same thing about the headphone jack, but yeah, deal with it. So things will change to, to adapt to that. Just to finish this off, my my final email response after going back and forth with this person with all these arguments that you guys were bringing up was, look, hey, if you're really this upset about it, there's plenty of uh, PC machines that have the specs that you want, and Windows 10 ain't that bad. So there you go. And you got a really <laughs> polite response to that. That was a G GFU response, definitely. So just just you know where I was coming from, I, because I'm I'm in agreement with you guys, but I'm just saying you know I I can also be man enough to step back and look at it and go, okay, I understand, well, I understand what you want, and I understand what you're asking for. Apple's not going to give it to you, but you know at least I can see, okay, I can see you you have a, a perceived need that you think is very important, and Apple doesn't make a solution for you. They and do that make sucks. a solution. That does suck. They, you know, no, if you're an Apple that fan, that's, do, that. that's the sad part it's about it. It's called a MacBook Pro. Yeah, you got to think about it. Like, if you were just to buy the drive, screw the computer. We're going to ignore the computer, put it in any brand. The drive alone, a Samsung 960, one terabyte M2, is roughly $600 on Amazon. If you yeah. look at the MacBook Pro, the Amazon, I mean, the Apple upgrade is $1,000. Yeah, you can't, you can't make the argument with, with this one person because they're, they're willing to pay two grand to, to, to have somebody solder one in or figure out a solution for them so wow they got issues man Seriously. oh yeah like, even yeah, james is shaking his head and he's ego in. i'm just saying <laughs> you know for all the years in retail um the amount of people who go and buy a macbook air and go oh it's great yeah it'll come on my photographs they leave the store come back two days later really upset because nothing will load into it it happened a lot and you just show them like here's an external here's an external drive just plug that in good to go end of conversation yep. it happened yep. a lot yeah. yeah, Velcro it on the on the on the back outside. I've, I've known guys that have done that with their MacBook Airs. You know? I do. Put it That's in where my, my DJ drive is one of these M2 SSDs that you know, and I have it literally stuck to the back of my club computer for that reason because I just don't want to have things on the table because people spill spill beer on it all the time. Here's an iPod sock. Put it in that and pin it, safety pin it onto the back <laughs> of a cloth bag that you put the thing in. You twat. <laughs> It's the same thing that they carry around in these massive, great big sort of satchels. You know, they're huge, great big things. They spend another hundred and twenty dollars on a carry bag for it, and then they put this tiny little MacBook into it. You know, it's like, well, there's room in there for loads of things. Yeah, Surely you can do it. Um, one of the interesting things that are leading on from that about expandability and limitations is um, there was a massive discussion over 
what was expandable wasn't expandable with the new iMac, and particularly with the iMac Pro, because we've got the new iMac Pro, which is the ridiculously vastly powered machine, which is awesome, which has a hefty tag to go with it as a price. Um, but there was loads of questions immediately. What can I swap out? What can I add in? What's user service? What's user upgradable? Um, and yeah, that's what pisses me off is it's like, hang on, you, you know, you're giving me an upgradable machine up to 20 grand, maybe. And telling me I can't open it up. That's yeah, Apple's I mean, new way, man. I mean, that that's the way it goes with Apple from this point forward. And, and again, this is another one of those areas. If you're an Apple fan, you just need to accept from now on, you need to buy the maxed out machine that you think you're ever going to need for the next X number of years, mm -hmm. dependent upon how frequently you upgrade your machine. That's just the way it is. So why is that, though? I, I don't get that. So they can maximize their money on the upgrades because people can do it cheaper via Crucial, et cetera, for memory and so on. Sure, and which was the yeah. beauty of the like G5 and Mac <clears throat> Pro. I'm, I'm going to fight back a little bit on that one, but not too much, not too much at all. I like, don't take this all the way the wrong way. But as a person who's had to deal with people coming in, calling me names that my grandmother wouldn't be proud at at the Genius Bar. And after we spend like a week trying to figure out what is this really random ghost in the machine. And then finally we give up and we yank all the third party RAM and we put in Apple stock RAM and the machine runs like a dream. I can definitely say especially on the pro level machines where it's normally mission mission critical work i'd rather that they stick it all in there and make it bulletproof and close the door and don't let me in than to let me in and have me put my own self in danger of my workflow and want to go into the store and yell at all of the people that are gamefully employed to help you almost because that is a common I ever had situation bro. Pro was from crucial or owc memory yeah but I accept I'm that, and I never sure. try to take that to a genius bar. No, trust right. me. Um, J James would back me up, bro. It's crazy. Like, I've been called names that I don't even think Trump would call me because <laughs> they're mad because of the system, the way it His works. And, and I'm like, yo, when we figure out that it's the third party RAM, then they get mad. It's like, well, why didn't anybody tell me? I'm well, like, yeah, I'm pretty do, positive just... it's in the documentation somewhere, but, no, hey, but it's still the, not the, the point. I think the other thing, Doc, is the conspiracy theory kicks in there because if they, if you just go, ah, oh, well, it's a third party around, they go, well, what else are you going to say? You're not going to complain about your own stuff, are you? So it's definitely, you know, you just bullshitting to uh, to to make it okay. And I, I, I'm, yeah, yeah, but if putting your RAM in fixes it, it's not yeah. a conspiracy. Well, that's just, absolutely, well, you know, what, you know what it is like. No, I, I agree. All, in, but... in all intents and purposes, a lot of time the RAM is actually made by the same company. But where the difference come from, and anybody that's ever done remote control cars or remote control planes, whatever you know this, you could just buy a, a set of uh, a set of batteries, or you can buy a set of match batteries. And a set of match batteries is normally about. I want to call it like 30, 40 percent the price because someone actually took time to test every single cell to make sure you're getting the same flow. And so I think that's the only difference, really. I think that they overly test the ones that are coming in. So they do cost them even more than what, you know, say a person just buying it. So they, they charge it to you because it's their it's their deal. As in my only guess. Otherwise, yes, yeah, a conspiracy theory. But if you're in business and you have the ability to sell something for more, why wouldn't you? <laughs> there's, a, there's, a question, there's a question here from, uh, and please, Deep Pan, don't take this as me taking the piss too hard. He said, won't this iMac Pro hit the same problem as the Trash Can Mac in that there's no GPU upgrades? And I'm sitting looking Correct. at the spec here online and going, hang, hang on, you've got a Radeon Pro Vega 64 with 16 gig of RAM on it. If you can make yeah, that the, out, Jesus Christ, what the, the hell are you is, doing? You're never going to, well, who cares? The ceiling sure is far who, too high. Sorry, I apologize. It's all right. I mean, obviously, I, I work with a lot of guys in the 3D industry, and they, um, when the MacBook Pro came out, they just ditched it straight away. The, the sort of um, the graphics at the moment are awful, and they're still going to be awful on the Mac Pro as well. Uh, they all moved over to uh, Windows, and they, they put loads of articles online about how they transitioned from Mac to Windows. And these these guys are diehard fans. But when you need 3D rendering, you need an NVIDIA graphics card. End of story. I mean, that's just that industry, but there's so many guys that I could tell you that have moved over uh, because of the lack of graphics card. It upsets me, really, because those guys make the killer plugins for Final Cut, the motion and things like that, and they're all gone now. They've all moved over to the Windows. I mean, it's such a, such a shame, and I was hoping the Mac Pro would maybe make that jump to NVIDIA, but um, well, I don't know. So 
But they did fix bring- it in a way because they brought uh, Sonnet to the front, which has always been there, by right. the way. Sonnet's been around for decades doing the same thing. But they brought it to the front because they knew people would bring it up. So they put it on stage right next to them and go, look, this baby will do all of the crap you're talking about. The empty box is 329. Solve the problem. Not- Don't complain about it. But not until the next version of the operating system. The problem, Doc, so far has been that those external uh, GPU enclosures have not worked. You know, yeah. it, or you had to hack around it so badly because tweet. the operating system basically all but disabled it. And you'd even talk to Sonnet and they'd tell you that stuff. So, you know, like way back when, we were supposed to have the promise of external GPUs with like Thunderbolt 2, and it just never, ever worked. Yeah. Jury's out on whether that'll work again next time. Is it, is well, it purely, should now because Apple's building in it, building in the in the in the platform. Like Doc said, they had that Sonnet box right out there, and I think you can get the whole you get the whole rig for six hundred bucks. But James, the card, the the enclosure, and, and the whole deal. James, are you mm-hmm. saying that it's definitely an AMD versus Nvidia? Uh, yeah, massively because obviously um, Apple want to be able to configure the Radeon cards a certain way, and. Um, AMD are happy for Apple to actually do that, you know, give hand over all of their coding and knowledge to Apple for them to actually make the graphics card work the way it want. NVIDIA just say no to Apple, you know, we make them this way and take it or leave it, which is why, you know, um, the NVIDIA platform is getting much better and better and better because the rendering and everything they do is, isn't is governed by any anybody else other than them. Um, it's, a, it's a shame. I've, like I said, I've lost some really good friends through the industry because I've moved over to Windows now. I know yeah. it sounds really odd and no, no, no. for years, you know, years and years. And um, I hate when I talk about Windows now, but there you go. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I, I, I hadn't really clocked that as, a, as an issue because I just look at the 16 gig of RAM on this card and think, well, how much headroom do you need? Jesus Christ. But it, it's not to do with that. It's um, And uh, is, is this going to – because the, the, the other thing is um, – uh, is the Oculus Rift has, has said, you know, we're not prepared to make an Oculus Rift that's Mac compatible because Apple don't make a machine that will run it properly. Um, uh, is is that going to be the case with this because of the NVIDIA versus AMD issue, or will this machine run an Oculus Rift properly? I, I think I the answer know. is most people don't know, but I, it's my understanding that that Vega card should should be fast enough for that that system. Yeah, yeah. I would have thought so. I mean, is it going to be as good? The thing is, is what you're talking about, you're talking about the type of people that if, for most of them, if it's not the top of the line, they have no interest in it whatsoever. If they can't get the absolute max, and I don't I don't know that I can guarantee that the, that Vega is the max. Like, if you're putting it head-to-head against the top of the line in offer, offering from NVIDIA, I, my assumption, and again, I don't know much about this. My assumption is that it falls short. Yeah. So then they're just like, well, forget it. You know, I don't care. I'm a hardcore gamer, and all I care about is, you know, leveling everything to the max and having the the maximum frame rate. And if you don't have that, you know, it, it's it's a pissing contest over there. And you know, it, for a lot of gamers, if you're not maxed out, then you're a chump. Well, that's kind of covered off the, uh, the, the, the iPad Pro. I mean, the, I, the, the iMac Pro, um, uh, we're all kind of lusting after it, aren't we? But is realistically, is anyone going to invest in that? Because at the moment, I don't, I'm hoping that they're going to do something with the Mac Pro because I don't need a screen. And the, I, great, the, skill, the, the screen's 5K, and I, great, I'm going to get 18 cores with it and all that kind of stuff. But to be honest, if the, if the new Mac Pro comes out and has got an equivalent spec and it's just a, an iMac Pro in a box, I'd still take the iMac Pro in a box over the iMac Pro with a screen. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be through the roof. I, I, I think, I mean, they've already said they're making the Mac Pro. So, Because this question came up for me from a couple of people too. And I guess, I don't know, people missed that story a couple months back when Apple had all those, you know, those tech journalists in and said, yeah, we know the Mac Pro, the trash can thing. We, we tried to do something. It didn't work. It wasn't what our customers were looking for, and we're going to build what our customers are looking for. And it was at the same time when they said, oh, and by the way, we're going to have a pro offering for the iMac. So I was very excited about the possibilities of the Mac Pro just based on what they did with the iMac Pro, because that iMac Pro is an amazing, amazing machine. And I think it's going to serve that same market that was buying the trash can Mac Pro. Yeah. And then for the for those pros who the trash looked at the trash can Mac Pro and said that's not the system that we wanted, 
I think that's what the, the, the Mac Pro is going to be all about. And I can't even wait to see what Apple does with that. Because I think they I think they really listened to those customers who were not happy about the lack of exp- ex- internal expandability oh, of the um, of the trash can. And I think what we're going to get is you're going to get something that's even more configurable and way more expandable than the iMac Pro. I think the base specs are going to be, like you said, very similar in terms of what's like in that box. Um, I think, you know, that the iMac Pro is giving hints of that, but then it's going to take it to a whole no- whole nother level in terms of, uh, you know, how the whole thing is built my, out. My sneaking suspicion is that the, the specs may be beyond, otherwise they won't be able to maintain the price point. Well, you're going to, you're going to have, uh, what I'm saying is you're going to have the same, um, uh, Xeon processors, right. But you're going to have multiples, right? So you, it's, it's Two where in the iMac, cores. you just have a single with multiple cores. You're going to be talking about multiple, multiple processors with multiple cores in, in the base configurations. But as far as like what processors are going in there, they're going to be the Radeons. It's going to be the ECC Ram. It's going to be, um, the Vega graphics cards. They're just going to be different specs, right? Yeah, I mean, a couple of points here as well. Deep Pan's uh, reminding me, and I think it's a good point here, um, was getting ILM up on stage with the HTC um, VR goggles, sticking two right. fingers up at Oculus Rift, and I think it was. I think that's a good point. Um, and Paul Dixon said, if an iMac Pro is 4000 how much is a Mac Pro lo- box likely to be? I think there'll be a lower version. There'll be a $2,000 um, Mac Pro coming out, and then it'll be the expansions thereafter that take it up beyond up to the 20 what, mark, potentially. What is the base price point of the current one? They're not under... £200. Do, huh? It's just under £2,000 at the moment. 2, oh, wow. 000. That's the very basic one, the quad-core. But, I mean, I spec mine up with the six-core, and um, I added RAM from uh, from Crucial, um, but I bought the high graphics card, the two-megabyte, two-gigabyte graphics card. Um, and mine was nearly six. So, yeah, I think it's again. I'm going to go back to my sort of own industry, if you like. But I think um, we really need to find out, you know, what the people are using all this stuff for. You know, uh, it's the people who do the plugins for all of this sort of stuff, which really need this Nvidia stuff to be working with it. I just think it's a shame that Apple are missing out on all that in a huge way. So, are you are you saying that the new Mac Pro probably will will bypass the Nvidia to, Nvidia issue as well, the same as this one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a shame. Well, again, I you don't think it's going to have internal expandability through PCI cards, and someone can stick an NVIDIA in there. I, I think you'll have the ability to expand it. Where where it's going to maybe fall short is in NVIDIA supporting it. Right, that's where the problem yeah. always lies. So even when Apple does make machines or did make machines that were expandable, the problem was is the graphics card companies wouldn't make drivers for. Yeah. OS 10 in a lot of cases. That's what I seem to remember when we had machines that had slots is that like we had very limited choices when it came to the graphics uh, cards. And to be fair, Apple didn't write, uh, didn't write OSs that would work with every single card either. They kept it very well, limited. But that's not, I mean, that's screen. not Apple's job. That's the video company's yeah, job Apple's is to make drivers. No. They just didn't have a big enough market. Yes and no. So they weren't interested. Yes, Adam, I agree. But the no part of what I'm saying is the fact that Apple, the one thing Apple don't want is their blue screen of death, the kernel panic that comes on through a startup routine. Mm-hmm. So they limited the quantity of uh, of items that it would be compatible with, therefore, to limit that possibility. They, they, they've they limited it as much as the, as, as the, the manufacturers have. Right. Well, I think, but I, again, yeah. I think if they're serious about what they said at that meeting, that they're going to be responsive to that segment of pro customers, yeah. I think they're going to have to open themselves up to the possibility that they're going to have to accept some of that. Well, it's interesting that, because we, we, we're clearly agreeing that they need to embrace NVIDIA, but it's interesting that, that we're not sure that they are, and James is certain that they're not. So, good point. Um, Apple employees in China arrested for selling private user data in China. Ooh, this is an interesting story. One. Do you remember we all got those fake um, calendar reminders at the start yeah. of the year? I'm just wondering if this was, that was this lot. But a massive underground criminal operation has been run by Apple employees to steal and sell the private data of Apple users. Uh, uh, and the authorities have detained 22 people on suspicion of infringing the privacy of Apple users and illegally obtaining their digital personal information according to local police. In Shenzhen. I mean, we're not going to say this is an Apple employee issue. That's not what I'm saying. It's, it's you know, there's bad bad eggs in every basket. 
Um, but I just wondered whether that just correlated back to anything that anyone's seen, whether they they feel their private data has been compromised. Because there's been an awful lot of – I've had emails come to email addresses that have never been associated with Apple IDs, so I can let it go. But the fake um, appointments things that came up last year, that because no one knows that which of my emails is associated with the uh, – <laughs> And it was coming to my dot mac address. It was coming to but the that's correct just, one. That's just that's just algorithms and bots. I mean, the, the the thing about that is you write a program and it just does every variation of at mac dot com. Well, I've got another Apple, you know known to man. Yeah, but I've got another Apple um, uh, ID, and it came to that, and that's a Gmail address. So that's what makes you do it. The, they, they they do it with Gmail, Yahoo. No, but uh, it only hit those know. two. What? It only hit those two. That was the thing that was interesting. It's not the fact that that. So I've got five or six emails addresses that give me um, uh, five or six calendars, but the only ones that came through were one Gmail address that was associated with an Apple ID, and oh, one yeah. dot Mac that was associated with Apple ID. I, I hear the, what you're saying, but you're others, you're putting way too much intelligence on these on these hackers. None of they're, the others. They're, they're came not through. that sophisticated. Well, these uh, these guys here. If, if these are the guys that were that were behind that, then maybe there was. But none of none of the other stuff actually got the uh, the Apple stuff, the Apple calendar stuff. All right, just thought we'd talk about it. Sorry. Well, yeah, I, no, no, no. I, I think I, I'd echo what you say. I mean, obviously, you know, obviously as, as a Mac user, an ex Apple retail employee, you know, I, I had a load of uh, calendar reminder stuff. I just said last year, and it still kind of went on for a lot longer after last year as well. Um, I'm just getting so much spam at the moment. I just don't know where it's coming from. I mean, more than usual. Uh, and I've noticed that since uh, the past few months. So I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Apple's AirPods automatically will sync with Apple TV in TV OS Ooh. 11. And also you can do double tap to go to next track, which seems far better than starting bloody Siri. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I, use, um, I do a lot of running out here. And um, I use my AirPods all the time. They're just the best gadget of last year, I think. They were just fabulous. They even trumped my MacBook 2016. Uh, my AirPods are just brilliant. I had them oh. the minute they got released, and um, I use them every day. They are fab. I, I actually amazed that they still stay in my ears after all that worry about whether they fall out your ears or not. Uh, but now the uh, the functionality of Apple CV is just great. So it means you can kick back uh, downstairs in the city and just use them even now. So I think that's just great. Yeah, I think the the best part of that is the 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 constant fight in in our living room now is oh the TV's too loud and I'm like no well can't you hear it I go yeah I can hear it but I want to hear it with that cinematic ambiance you know and then so now I can kind of stick these in the ear and get the boom that I want without having to fight with the midget on the other end of the couch well since I got my ear uh, my in ear uh, moldings made with cutouts for the AirPods to go into. Um, my audio experience is massive. I went on the train on Monday down to London, and I stuck my AirPods in, and the the, the bass and the, the the cinematic experience really goes up when you take away all of the external noise and that tinniness that comes when they start to slip down your ear, especially when you're chewing your breakfast, because <laughs> they are shit. They are shit for chewing. If you've got chewing, if you've got chewing gum in. And you've got an AirPod in. You you won't have an AirPod in. <laughs> you've got to take. The I almost lost one on my bike for that exact reason, and it didn't dawn on me until you just said what happened. Like I thought it was maybe the vibration of the road, but no, I was chewing gum while I was riding the bike, and I caught it luckily. But now it makes sense. Go to these people, M Tech. They will mold your ears, and then they will send you a, a thing, and just say you and sent you, and they'll cut a hole in it so that you can, uh, so that you can, you can. Put your AirPod into it, and then it doesn't come out when you're running. It doesn't come out when you're cycling. It doesn't come out when you're chewing. It doesn't come out. Well, who, do, who does that? M Tech E M T E C. I need that. So can I do that here. remotely? If I got to go to the store, or can I do that remotely? Well, you've just got to go to a, a hearing specialist near you and send and get them to mold your ears. So they put like a little plug in, stop it going in, and then they squirt in a, a quick setting gel. And then what happens is, hang on, mine are down here. It's right, I can't show you the ones in this box because they're my they're my ear defenders that I use for work, but they're green. Ooh. So so they won't show up on camera. There you go. Oh, okay. Of course they're gonna yeah. um, you're uh, holding up nothing. Yeah. So 
So here's the his, so there's there's the red one. Look, and what I did was I got them to take the moulds that they use for my ear defenders, and then I said, "Can you cut a hole in it so I can stick my AirPods in?" So there's a hole there, and nice. you take the AirPod. There we go. Take your AirPod, and you can just put it in, and that's it. And then that sits in your ear like that, and uh, they don't come out. There's no way they're moving at all. And I went on the uh, I went on the show the other week, and uh, just to be different, I put them in the upside down so that they look like an antenna. <laughs> <laughs> of course, left and right were switched, but they didn't matter because there's only mono podcast. So, how much, to... how much was that? How much are you going to get that for? Uh, those are eighty pounds to get made. Woo-hoo! So, but oh, that was including my ear pressing. So that oh, was okay. them doing the measurement because they're up the road in Sh- in Shrewsbury. So, ah, oh, my hometown. What a lovely place. Yeah. Shrewsbury. 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 Shrewsbury if you live there, oh. Shrewsbury if you're out. Brett, there. we got to go to the UK to get these. No, no, no. You just go down to your local store that does, like, hearing aid mouldings. Get them to mould it for you. And I was you... trying to get the dude to come to the bash, man. Shut up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come to the bash, man. <laughs> First of July. It'll be awesome. If you want to come to the bash, we've got some, we've got some tickets. I've picked a bad weekend because there's about six or eight people who, who aren't coming because of the fact that they've got daughters have got dance shows and stuff like that so there are tickets available get yourself down to the bash it's first of july at the um uh, at the link here in in birmingham and it's it's a brilliant day absolutely brilliant day it'll still be brilliant because we're still doing it and if it's pissing down it doesn't matter because we've got a big hall that we can go in and play games in so uh, go to youtube and check out the british tech live channel and you'll see a video of all the fun we had there last year it was it was awesome uh, 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 so, um, iOS, iOS 11 features. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Keyboard, keyboard, keyboard. Keyboard, 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 keyboard yes. with emojis. Now, if, now if, you've, uh, if, if you've downloaded the beta like I have, I've got my iPad here at the moment. I wouldn't dare put it on my phone. Do not put it on your phone if you can help it. Uh, on the iPad, uh, one of the best features I think is great is the idea now when you touch the keyboard, you can just strike down with your finger. Okay? So you've got the key, all the keys, and then you strike it down, and you get the secondary uh, key, which is just the coolest thing. Fair enough. And that's it for you. Just, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the entire... Well, no, obviously, you, you can pull the, uh, pull the apps into the dock, and I think this is the best crossover we've seen now between iOS and macOS. So we're actually seeing now kind of that, those two ecosystems come together and actually work the same. So now you can get your settings icon and drag it into your dock, the dock gets smaller and longer, uh, which makes perfect sense. The only thing in the beta I can't seem to do is pick up the documents, which I can do, but I can't seem to put them into the pages document. So you can go to your photos, tap on a photograph, move it slightly, tap on the other photographs around it, then move it over sort of the pages up, and then it puts them in. But I get the, the idea is that's what it does, but it doesn't do it just yet. Not I get the anyway. impression that drag and drop is going to be one of those things that you either, it's a Marmite thing, you either love it, or you kind of like you lose it for a week and then you go, okay, right, back to where I was. Yeah. How'd you do that again? <laughs> yeah. But then it doesn't matter, right? No, I mean, no, it doesn't matter. No. Yeah, yeah. You either use it or you don't. So it's great that it's it there. Off. And if you don't want it. <laughs> what about the redesigned app source, Japs? Because I've got to say, <laughs> beautiful. It, I look, beautiful. It looks shit. I'm yeah. sorry, man. Oh, it, oh, there, there is, nothing is any more findable than it was before. <laughs> True. It's, it, what I think it's great is for developers. Developers now got a chance to really showcase their applications off. They can go full screen, have lots of extra videos, tutorials. Uh, you get to see how the, the the app was developed. So I think developers, if you're lucky enough to get to the front page and have all that kind of extra space, I think it, it gives the developers a lot of um, a lot a bigger spotlight than it did previously. It still seems doesn't do even much more to help curated, people though, get there. As far as like findability, it seems even more at the App Store teams. Uh, discretion who gets found right. uh, i could be wrong i haven't i have not explored it but that's what it looked like well i mean it looks just like apple music so if you're using apple music and know how that goes you know it's it's all about the curation sense, yeah. and it seems yeah. like a similar philosophy is being taken to the to the app store and, and it's probably the dumbest thing so far but on my ipad i enjoyed the today view and it's kind of like the news app 
exploded <laughs> and just became a little bit more usable. But I like the way that it's all chunked out in sections and things like that. And I, I'm, the story has a similar feel to it. So what you get is a little bit less bifurcation from internal apps to internal apps. I mean, they do start to have a similar sort of feel and play to it all the way down to even the control center. Yeah, I just think the I think it's just great. It's a shame it's just so buggy. Obviously, we expect that from a beta. Well, what do you expect? Uh, yeah. there's, there's a lot. I'd I'd love for it to work. Um, so there's obviously lots of pauses in it at the moment um, when you do from app to app stuff. But I just think it's going to be great. In fact, I think the whole WWDC was really iPad iOS 11 for iPad. I think that's really what uh, we got from all of that because. Um, I think it's dominated. Uh, you know, anybody I spoke to previously about it is the all agree that the uh, iPad, the new iPad, and the iOS 11 is 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 a show stealer for me. Absolutely. Oh wow, that's that's, that's so you sounds like you're running the the betas. Is there other people here running the betas? Anybody? Oh, get I brave didn't on my to... iPad too. I didn't want to go on my phone until like the second version. But what, what kind of pulled me out about that, and I completely forgot about it when I set it up. I wanted to watch an iPad. I'm like, because they're, I mean, they're everyday users, but they're not so mission critical that if it, you know, started to act wonky, I wouldn't care. Like, I'd get over it. But you can't do the watch without doing the phone. So I'm not going to touch the phone until they release the second version because the first version normally breaks some like important apps like Instagram and, and Line. And I just, I just don't want to do that yet. So I'll, I'll wait. But on the iPad, it's pretty epic. The response, responsivity of an iPad Pro. 12 inch OG, like the original monster, is is pretty incredible. Like, man, this thing is faster than it was a week ago. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty nuts. I like this thing too about the automatic setup because I did the nuke and pave, and it it didn't do anything because I don't have a secondary device. But you had this option where you can get the floating uh, cockroach thing that looked like the midges, you know, in the Highlands or whatever, and you point the one device at the other device, and it reads it. And it will move all of your passwords and keychain and all of that stuff over. I thought that was cool. Similar to when you first set up the Apple Watch. But um, that's kind of a neat way. If you work in a place where, you know, say you and wanted all of us to have the same stuff on all of the phones, you could basically, without using a Casper machine or whatever, is basically fill all the phones up with the exact same yeah, data. Good, good for education. By using, huh? Good for education, where they want to set up identity. Yeah, 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 for schools and whatnot. Or... Fleet, fleet dudes, fleet drivers. Not to be confused with Fleetwood Mac. That's a whole different. Uh, I don't think sport. anyone is going to confuse that. <laughs> New camera features. Has anyone tried Hefe yet? Say what? Hefe, the new the new JPEG format. Is that in there yet or not? Uh, Hef. Yeah, Hefe. I haven't taken any pictures with my iPad, but I yeah I should have checked to see if it was in there, but it makes sense. <laughs> It's hilarious. Uh, what a name. And uh, uh, life. Apple didn't things. name it, though, so I want people to know that, that the MPEG group named it, and it's technically MPEG 4, but they came up with that high image format thing, okay. as I was discussing with the people in the Slack room. So don't take a piss at Apple for the name. It's not their fault. Okay. <laughs> also, do we care about live photos? I mean, you know, great feature when you're showing it off. Great. To sort Get them, Brett. Get them. Go, store. Brett. Go. I hate it. 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 It's just the worst thing ever. When people show me their photos, go, I've got no room on my iPhone. Why? I went, press that yellow button dot. Bang. There you go. You'll have plenty of room now on your iPhone. I just think I, it's, I'm with you 100% until I heard Brett's answer. So I'm going to let him say it. Go on, Brett. What, what, which one? Do about context? Yeah. Well, you told yeah, the Chuck like, on, the, on the Chuck and Brett show. <laughs> I, I did. I found that. Uh, after you know a long period when you've forgotten what the actual context of a photo was, that being able to just see that surrounding couple seconds, it it brought back the whole scene in a way that a photo never does. Kind of the way Apple promoted it, and I was very skeptical. Uh, it just took it took the photo getting old enough that I forgot what happened around it that I actually realized it kind of mattered. Yeah, oh, I've never, I've never taken any live phone. photos, but when I heard that, I like I might have to start playing with it again because I always thought it was dumb <laughs> because it would just you know be funny. But when you said that, it made all the sense in the world. And there are cases where we get that kind of drunk where you don't remember what the picture was. <laughs> uh, drunk or old, <laughs> sure. Uh, I, I, the only two things I'm going to take with that statement is we and occasionally, Doc, because <laughs> occasionally doesn't really cover it. 
Um, uh, Siri improvement. Now, the one thing I have heard from a couple of people, particularly Lee Peterson, he has said that Siri is snot hot on 11. It is much, much better, greatly improved, and he sees far more accuracy in it. That hurt me to say that. So, but go on. Yeah, I like the orb when you do it, though. It's funny, the little climber thing on the bottom, it's so trippy. I, I keep pressing it yeah. just to watch it. Yeah, that, that whole new orb thing, it reminds you something out of kind of um, a Marvel superhero film, like the Tesla rack, you know, it kind of all moves around and kind of glows, and it's kind of like something magical, like a ball. But I'm getting reports, obviously, that um, the, on the high Sierra, that Siri is just really responsive, really accurate, and very, very quick. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to some more testing it's like that when you're in school right and then uh in, in my case it was uh tammy Botka. we went away for vacation and you know she was always cool she was like, the fun the kid in school but somewhere between i think 10th and 11th grade after she came back after the summer we all stopped and she walked down the hallway she might as well have had theme music all the boys were like oh snap what happened here and so that's what happened to siri she just she just had that one year of puberty during summer, and then you know the next day with all the rest of the kids, she's the hottest thing in school. It's, it's certainly made it more cool with the animation, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that's why she's been ignoring me for so long, right? Got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was one of you know the cool girls. They wouldn't talk to cats like us, right? You're like, hey Siri, and then she's like, oh, is that Joyce's brother? <laughs> Uh, last thing was do not disturb whilst driving. I've got to say, I was really a bit disappointed. I, I wasn't disappointed. I was glad that they did it. So if you're driving, it says, I'm off. You know, I'm driving, sod off. And you can do an auto response, which I think is brilliant. But they could, I, I, I would have liked to have seen them do a tears thing where you could say, okay, look, I'm not the driver. Or you could say, just give me four icons that just fill the screen that just let me just end the call because it doesn't let me end the call on the steering wheel. Right. The that first part is there is in there though. What you it, it will you have the option to to press a button and say I'm I'm not driving. Yeah, no, no, I know that. I like yeah. that. That's what yeah. I said was good. But what, oh, okay. what what I thought they could do was give a CarPlay esque type feel to it. Where yeah, you just like why doesn't it have icons. a car? Why doesn't why does it default to a black screen instead of just the CarPlay screen? Yes, and it's yeah, and the answer is is they want you to buy a car with CarPlay. Yeah, okay. I think. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. But, I think but you're right. Yeah. I would just like it to go. Look, you can you can end a call with this button. You can start your podcast, start your music with this button, and you can start navigation and maps with this button. There's four buttons on screen. They fill the entire screen, and that's all you need. So you don't need to take your eyes off the road. You can just reach over and dab it, and that's it. It's done. I I would love a a CarPlay mode. It'd be great to be able to take an old iPad and just put Car CarPlay OS on it and leave it in the car, right? Yeah, shame somebody can't develop some kind of like a web a web kind of interface that you could do to a website that then links back to the apps. It'd be cool if somebody could design something like that that would enable us to do exactly what you just said there. Build a web interface first that then links back to it. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, last thing then, uh, HomePod. Uh, oh, now quiet. I've quiet. got to say, I I wasn't that impressed with HomePod after they finished talking about it. And one of the things that I've seen since, and I need to just quote this carefully, um, but the description of it was extremely bassy, which makes me think, hang on, you've really screwed up here, Apple, because um, the Sonos is not extremely bassy. The Sonos is high quality. You've pitched this at the price point of Sonos, but actually you've come up with something that's equal to junk by, but loud. Who who's who's saying that and who's had a, I had the opportunity to actually hear one in a in a decent environment? I saw that on trusted reviews. I think I can't find it at the Ooh. minute, but they did say it was it was bassy. Where did they hear it? From, remember this comes from the home of the Dre speaker, which was renowned for its bass. You know, renowned for for that kind of low end um, sound. Uh, but I could tell you now, I really think I saw an interview with Tim uh, this morning. And he was saying, you know, that's that the first thing they thought about was getting the speaker right first. And I just, I'll tell you, I'm just in love with it. I haven't got it yet. I've seen it. But um, I just can't wait to get my hands on one. I used to uh, sell I, I think it's going to be like the watch, yeah. you know. You don't really know until you, you got it and you hear it and you feel it. So it's easy to poo-poo it right now. But the hard part about bass and about speakers in general, as a person who my family owned the store, I literally sold speakers for 30 years. It's so subjective. 
Like, oh, no, you know I, what I mean? don't disagree with that, Doc. But huh? I don't disagree with the statement there oh, okay. that it is subjective. But generally speaking, the people who understand audio, and you were the you were one of the people who said this to me. I am. I am. Yeah. yeah. Is, well, is so that, I, that excessive I will have to base hear is just something that you use to cover up the shit that's on the top, and that's what Monster was about for a long time. And it's, oh, cer- it's certainly oh, what God. it's certainly what Beats was about at the start because of their tie up with Monster, and and they yeah. made it basey to cover up the fact that essentially it was a piece of shit, and that's what bothers me. Is this might be the case here? We've just got to be careful. I think. Do you, you really think Apple would make a piece of shit? Um, I really think that this is probably heavily Beats influenced, and Beats would. I think Beats well, have obviously definitely had uh, an input on it for sure. They, you know, they've learned a lot about the Beats speaker. And remember, you know, the Apple stores are based around demo and the products. So if you go to the sound area now, you know, the Bose SoundLink 2, you can play with that right there. You can play the Beats pill. And then that, that that hideously massive round speaker for like three grand. I forget the name of it. It's kind of gold and got the edges on the screen. Yeah, I mean, just, just to give balance, Deep Pan in the chat room is saying he's seen some reviews that says that the music quality is better than Sonos. And it, I may be wrong. I just think they've clearly pitched it at the Sonos mark and price point. Sure. And yeah. I think they've got to at least hit that sound quality. If well, and also Bose. I mean, can, Bose, can, I, yeah. can I give you guys something though, that I, I'm well. sure a lot of people don't think about? And I, I maybe I only think about it this way because I am a DJ. If you go to the Apple page, right, and you look at the AirPod, um, not the AirPod, the HomePod. See, I'm going to do it already. Outside of um, promoting Planet of the Apps, which is coming up on the very first page, you see. Katie Witt, uh, Katy Perry, David Guetta, the top A-list of pop and the top A-list of indie. If you take Apple's obsession with promoting hipster music to sort of sell the app, every one of those is guaranteed, Basie. Every one of those is built, um, except for the indie list, is built off the EDM swag, which EDM swag is how much bass can I throw at you till your body feels that it's higher or molly than it really is. Like that's the whole EDM producer's mantra, basically. So they have been promoting it to the right crowd, you know, the the taste makers, but that type of music is basically in general. So even if you go to the Apple Store today, right now, when you finish listening to this, go to the Apple Store, go to the music session and listen to the demo music that's on there. You have to work it through to get to a a Yo-Yo Ma or Joshua Bell or something that just wouldn't be naturally based because it's the way music is produced Anything with an acoustic range, yeah. Yeah, they don't don't make music the way Brett and I grew up where we like it, where ours was loud, but it wasn't all bass. You know, like, I'm a Dead Kennedys guy, you know, and, and like, you know, punk, it's loud, but it wasn't overly bassy. But, you know, the... EDM makes hip hop sound like it doesn't have enough bass now. It's kind of crazy, bro. There's the warble thing where, I mean, I, I watch the kids when it hits them, they go, oh, it, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, yo, that's ridiculous. You know, from a sonic perspective, it's ridiculous. But I think Apple does sort of demo that, and pretty much so does everybody else. I mean, you're starting to see it in commercials now. Look at any modern car commercial for a car that's designed to go to, say, somebody in this say 20 yeah. ish to 35 range. I, I wasn't i wasn't offering it up as a as a as a slag off because I, I i haven't seen it i haven't heard it it was just a, a, something that struck me in a review that made me think well i think you've got to be careful if it, if it really is that but but i hope it's not yeah i wonder if um anybody did video reviews and if you're able to hear any of the music you know like um like andy Naka used to go down and do a quick hands-on and he would kind of like video whatever they would let him i wonder if anybody has any views or we can ask someone who listened to it what was the demo music because i'm pretty positive that they, they in order to show it off they put the stuff that they sell a lot of or whatever is i'm, I'm assuming it'd be, it'd be, it'd be the kind of the music that they put in the theater to show off the dolby surround sound system with loads of yeah <clears throat> Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's fair though. I mean, the, if you go to an Apple store now, though, you've got, you've got Apple Music open to you now, so you can pretty much play any track through it. I think you're right. If you go to the previously, we used to have playlists already set up for the music, but yeah, you were kind of limited by what was on the iPod. But now, all when I was at the Apple store anyway, that you now have Apple, access to Apple Music, so you can listen to any track you want. So, um, mm. as far as demoing going, you know, I think they're just gonna blow you away. I just want to know what it sounds like with two, if one's good. Two would be right. Awesome. Well, and Deep Pan said in the uh, in the chat that uh, he predicts that you can you'll be able to connect multiple ones to the Apple TV to create sound, surround sound. 
which I think would be awesome. Oh, and like any kind of full awesome. house system with Sonos style uh, connections, that would be great. I would go, I would quite yeah. happily spend a week in the spare room for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is awesome filter you and oh my god that's so awesome i mean you know i, I used to work for bose um I, I spent a lot of time working for bose going to people's houses talking about speaker placement and things like that and everybody wants something different from music women don't like the sound of bass too heavy etc um but i think apple have actually got a, a really good thing on their hands here and if they market it right and it sounds good people you know they put an apple site they could buy anything but even more so, they've got the place and space to show it off. Oh, you know, and uh, yeah. I'm really going to do well. You know, you know what sounds. I'm I'm the most intrigued about. And one thing that I I know just from like James just made me remember it. I used to go to people's house and they'd be go, man, it sounds good and it's rich, but I wish I had a little bit more oomph to it. I was like, hold on, give me a second, and I would just pull the speaker out about three inches. Okay, now I'll yeah. try that same track again. They're like, oh, you fixed it. Because there's like I sold BMWs. That was our in-house brand, Bowers and Wilkins from the UK. Uh, some of the greatest speakers I've ever dealt with. And you literally to tune a set of eight oh ones, all you have to do is pull it away from the wall and give the bass port a little bit more room and you could add more bass without touching the EQ. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this thing has been for me. So in theory, um, you might be able to control some of that now. And again, for people that want to test how, if this actually works, you could take something as small as a UE, uh, Ultimate Ears, you know, uh, Logitech speaker, the little round bumpily thing that everyone basically has. Just try moving it around in various corners at your desk and listen to the sound change. You know, I have right. a uh, Sony, what you call this thing, a SX777, and it cannot stand to be up against the wall. But it's a little flat guy. But if you can give it like six inches, it sounds like a whole theater, you know. So I think that has a lot to do with it, too. And I'm curious how the technology of it hears itself and adjusts accordingly. I'm the most intrigued by that as a person who had the fight with speaker placement. My wife says exactly the same. Right. That, and that's another thing that I thought about when you were talking about this, Ewan, is like, you know, um, in theory, the thing should be infinitely tunable. I mean, it's going to try and tune itself the best but i mean if apple wanted to they could make it infinitely tunable just with software right so if there's an app that goes along with this and you can just tweak hey it's too bassy let me pull the bass down a little bit for my tastes then it should be doable i mean the, the tech that's in there certainly oh, supports yeah. it yeah yeah well, it's, got it's tribute that the woofers on the top okay. yeah no it's just weird i mean as a person who's been, you know, again, selling speakers forever, the woofer is on the top and the uh, seven tweeter array is on the bottom to do the beam forming. That's just really weird to me because, like, I don't know if you guys ever heard of a brand called um, Crossfire. Uh, Crossfire was by a company called Carver, and they used to sell a little subwoofer that was not much more than a nine inch cube. And their two tricks were put a dummy on this side and an active on this side. And they would basically push pull and the other one would be point the woofer straight down and then base the floor. So you feel the low frequency emitter. It wasn't intended to be a subwoofer. It was literally called a low frequency emitter. So when you do home theater, you didn't have that loud, obnoxious rumble or a really big subwoofer, but it filled out the room with the right amount of stuff. And those guys in Velodyne were very famous for the downward facing woofer. So I'm, I'm kind of curious as why they have a woofer pointing straight in the air. Downward facing woofer is a, a very modern uh, yoga move, actually. <laughs> I think you were going to say that. Is, is it, uh, I thought that was just downward dog. No. Well, the, uh, we had to make it hipper. All oh, right, so you're a woofer, yeah. woofer, right? Okay. A woofer is a dog. <laughs> uh, um, Six microphones, bro. God, I'm so blown away by the tech. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go through the edits in a second for the for the, the people that kindly support us. But one of the things that, that people do do is they support us through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash British Tech Network. Um, uh, if you could, please check your donation because we've had a bit of an issue that PayPal has suddenly decided to womp off a whole pile of people's um, uh, subscriptions through pay, through uh, Patreon. I don't know why. It's just, just that time. It's just happened and that's the end of it, whether they did it for a year and then it disappeared or what. I don't know. So please, if you donate through Patreon, please check that it's being collected by um, Patreon because I don't think it probably is. And there's a couple of people that we've contacted who've, whose donation has ended. And they're like, no, I definitely donate to you. 
I said, well, but it, it hasn't come this month, and they've checked, and PayPal, for just no apparent reason, has stopped it. So please, please, please check your donations through patreon.com forward slash British Tech Network. Alternatively, if you'd like to, just send us um, the donation that you would have given to uh, to them via a standing order, which a lot of people do as well already, to bageltechnews at gmail.com. That's our PayPal address. And you can just directly vote or donate to us, and then there's no people skimming off the top um, at, at Patreon as well. Well, thank you to Patreon for looking after us. That's not what um, I'm, I'm intending to do, but but um, but you can donate direct to this, and that all goes into the equipment for running the studio. It's bought um, a Mac Mini for for Righty, so we can do shows out at the other end and the far ends of Norwich and that kind of stuff. So uh, please, please, please continue to support us if you possibly can, because that little donation makes a massive difference to us. Um, we have a competition for you. Yes, you could win yourself a Spider 5 Express. We've got three of these donated to us. And all you've got to do is send in an email to britishtechnetwork at gmail.com. Please send it to the correct email address. Don't send it to anything else because um, we will ignore it. Um, and we need to find it. Uh, James is having connection trouble, clearly. And... Um, uh, don't worry. I can edit. And uh, you could win yourself a Spider 5. All you've got to do is answer the question, what are the three primary colours of your monitor? Simple as that. What are your three primary colours of your monitor? At the end of the month, when we've, uh, we've got that lot done, we will draw a winner, and then we'll have another competition next month with another question to win another Spider 5. Whoop. There you go. Superb. Um, it is real. It will be in your hands, and it is well worth the, uh, the entry. Uh, so there you go what is the primary colours of your monitor please also say thank you to UK2 for looking after us they are brilliant um, we've got our domains just been renewed by them for Bagel Tech and a whole pile of other stuff the server's been renewed they're with us for the next nine years guaranteed I don't know if I will be but they certainly will and um, uh, they are a supporter of the network that has gone on for eight, nine years already and they'll be going forward so we'll be doing probably nearly 20 years of them at some point if I stick around that long so please just give them some uh, some credit for that, if you like. Give them some faith at the fact that they are a, a UK firm who look after us. You wouldn't get any of this stuff without them. We couldn't afford the bandwidth on the servers. The server that we've got would cost us £400 a month if we uh, had to buy it. So please, please, please support UK too because they support us. And also check out Hoya Uniku is coming. Um, we'll be going up to Wrexham soon next month to get me measured and you'll see me with my glasses on and Jake's going to come with me and measure it all and it's going to look awesome and uh, it should be an absolute blast, yes. So um, uh, check out Hoya. Uh, if you want the Avantec glasses like I'm wearing tonight, then you can get those too and you can get the top loaders like Muller West and uh, all you got to do is send an email to podcast at hoya.co.uk and they will sort you out. And it doesn't matter what country you're in, you just send it to that and they'll get you onto your local rep. So if uh, someone with uh, Deuteronomy like answers and says uh, blue and yellow, <laughs> what, do they still win? <laughs> no. Because uh, <laughs> that's all they can see, though. Uh, no, someone replied to me else this week, and I was like, oh, he got it wrong. But I was just like, <laughs> and he tried to make a reason why he got it wrong. He tried to be clever, and it was not. It was just wrong. Um, uh, right. Uh, uh, Doc, have you got a cool thing for us, man? Uh, okay, first, I got to do the shameless plug. Uh, I started a new podcast. You guys should listen to it. It's only because I, I need you to. <laughs> anyway, Anything? it's called The Solid Podcast. It's at solid.podbean.com. And a lot of it, um, primarily, I mean, yeah, I'll have my guests and friends here from Hawaii on a lot. But you can take the stuff that I say and kind of apply it to almost any situation. Um, because we're talking about life. And uh, wow. a lot of times it's about, like, the way we look at things and the way we perceive things. And uh, the the recent episode that I'm editing right now just has to do with everyone's obsession with uh, being a victim all of a sudden. And, you know, not to take a piss out of anyone that actually had a severe situation. But again, the people like we were just talking about earlier, Adam basically brought it to light. Oh, Apple is making this computer and they don't put a big enough SSD in it. Oh, whoa, is me. Like, yeah, like that perception is gone so big that it's a little scary. So that was one of the topics of the episode this go around. Um, but yeah, um, if you can, please go hit it up and uh, like it and subscribe to it on iTunes and leave a review or something like that. That would be greatly appreciated. Cheers. Man. And then. Oh, you got um, as well. Right. Okay. Uh, and and uh, for my cool thing. 
you guys are going to probably take a piss out of me, but I, I just discovered this and I'm absolutely in love with this app. I, I got MUTV <laughs> so on my phone so I can now watch it without having to be attached to the TV doing something requiring VPNs and I did, probably shan't be doing. Did you pay for it? Yeah, it's oh, only right. like four bucks a month. Wow. It's, it's super really cheap. Good. I know, right? Like the Manchester guys only selling something for four bucks. That's unheard of. But it's kind of awesome and I like it. It allows me to see. Um, and maybe you guys have a channel you can just go to. I don't have that here. So having it on my mobile device looks really, really great on the iPad. I do wish it supported AirPlay, but I understand the licensing problems that would go with that. But um, yeah, it's like four bucks a month. So if you have any expatriates that listen to this show that maybe not at the home front or just someone that that like me is a red till you're dead and want to be able to see more stuff when you're on the fly MUTV the app is built really well it's really fast it's responsive the video quality is great it's worth four bucks good man okay thank you very much uh right cool thing please adam yeah so i am gonna pick one and and this one actually surprised even me i haven't been using it for too long because i just found out about it actually through um this app won one of apple's design awards at wwdc and it's a writing app um i'm a huge fan or have been a huge fan of markdown i use it for like all of my stuff uh, to date, my go-to app for that has been Byword, which I, I, I love, but this one may win me away, and it's an app called Bear, Bear Writer. And it's just beautiful. It's not necessarily, I mean, it's not directly a markdown app, so this is where I'm a little hesitant on it, at least initially. It looks like it puts everything into its own format, but where the advantage of that is is that it allows me to extend. So I can still use all of my Markdown. They even have a Markdown compatibility mode because they use a slightly tweaked version of actually Markdown. Um, but once it's in there, because they because it's not directly Markdown, what you can do is you can do things, and this is what I was kind of excited about, is with the Apple Pencil, you can like directly insert it's notes. Um, what? Was there a question? So no one talked, I don't think. Oh, that was weird. I got a weird feedback. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I heard um, that. I don't know what that was. <laughs> ghost, ghost in the machine. Ghost in the machine. Um, and it has this nice little feature called tagging. So it doesn't necessarily have folders and directories and things like that. But what you can do is you can put just hashtags into your stuff and it will automatically start to organize and catalog it. And you can even hashtag and then put in a slash to kind of do a nested directory structure. Um, it had direct importing of uh, Markdown files. So I was able to just take everything. And it does kind of take that library approach, kind of like um, photos or any other kind of library application. So basically, you put everything into this, and then it does syncing through iCloud Sync. It doesn't even have a save e either on the Mac or on iOS. Just when you write, it auto saves and auto syncs um, if you're using the Pro version. So there's actually two versions of it. Um, there's a free version. And then the pro version is, I think, 15 bucks a year or a buck 50 a month. Um, and then what that gives you is that gives you um, syncing themes and then exporting. So where Markdown comes back into it, it, is, it does have the ability to directly export to Mark, uh, Markdown. And then um, the last thing that I was really impressed by, and Brett, maybe you know this already, um, on my Mac, I use Marked for viewing a lot of my Markdown and I love it. And um, there was a direct uh, just send to marked button in the menu. Yeah, so we I worked together just... on that. That was awesome. I didn't I didn't know how amazing Bear was going to be when it was released. I didn't realize it was going to be as huge as it was. But I was really happy to hear from them when they were first starting development. Yeah. So I've, I've been very impressed with some of the more advanced features. You know, if you put if you put an address in there, it it provides links to that. You can put hyperlinking in. Um, I like I said, I'm just starting to tap into it. but just initially, I'm very impressed, and I th I'm thinking this is going to become my new um, sort of writing app where I put just everything. Notes. It has a keyboard shortcut uh, that you can activate globally to insert a note. Um, it just the list kind of goes on and on, and for 15 bucks a year, it, that's an amazing price in my opinion. So very impressed, and it Adam, looks gorgeous. Adam, did you know that in uh, Set App, the app Pixa is uh basically these same cats and they do the same thing 
with uh, images on your computer. I just started playing with it because I'm always worried about these, you know, apps that do all of this picture sorting and whatever. But the picture version of what you're talking about, it comes with said app. And the Shiny Frog guys built that too. Yeah. Bear, yeah. Bear is the best thing Shiny's, Shiny Frog has done. They've always had good looking apps that almost met the mark for me, but Bear is. Don't make a final decision until I get mine out, though. <laughs> then we can, I was going to say mine that noise you heard was Apple Brett design award, trying to but. tell you to listen to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I'm impressed so far, and I think it's it's at least taking worth taking a look at if you've been using something else and you can do it for free you can look at it for free um if you want the advanced features like syncing which is important to me because the other thing is i want to be able to have the same thing and which is why i use byword right now i want to be able to have the same thing on my ios devices and my macs and and work in one sort of format um but this looks like it's going to be amazing and you can and you can back it up and it while it is a library app getting stuff in and out when you're a pro customer, you know, when you pay for the pro one, it seems very easy. Like I can go straight to Markdown. I can go straight to text files or RTF. So it's not, I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to be locked in, which is good too. Cool. Thank you, mate. Uh, James, you've lost your video, mate. Yeah, it should be back on, hey, buddy. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we still got your audio, but we just got the JR up. So go ahead, John Ross. Okay, so mine is a bit uh, Apple-esque. It is Apple Motion 5. Um, Apple's still plugging this. It's a great little tool. It's kind of the baby brother of Final Cut. So if you're a big Final Cut user, um, this is kind of its baby brother. And what's great about it is it's like $48.99. It's no money at all for what it can do and what it can produce. It is phenomenal. If you use um, iMovie a lot as well, um, you can drop all your stuff from iMovie into uh, Motion and just do the best, best graphics uh, ever. You don't need to be... Um, you know, a genius at it either. There's plenty of YouTube videos. That's me pointing myself, but you can't see my videos, so I don't know why, um, about it. But it's it's such a great tool. And, you know, some people have actually, you know, got their business off the back of Notion. And for 49 quid, it's it's amazing because you can actually build um, um, sort of plugins and sort of feature sets for Final Cut from inside the app. So it really is um, a hell of an app for, the, for a very small price. And it just makes everything look really professional. Uh, when it comes to iOS, I'm currently also in France. I'm trying to learn French. Uh, I've done all the Duolingo stuff. It's pretty good. But there's another app on the market called Memrise. So that's M-E-M-R-I-S-E. It's great. It does so obviously French and uh, German and all those other bits of Spanish. Uh, but it's a really cool way of kind of uh, getting you to learn a, a new foreign language um, and does really good things like um, reinforce this word. So it shows you lots of videos and things to help you reinforce words. Um, really, really nice. And there you go, Motion Five and Memorize. Uh, motion Five. I mean, there's, there's a, to say Motion Five is is kind of like the baby brother of Final Cut is is wrong because it just does so much more in terms of animation. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah but quite- not as much in terms of video, does it? Oh. I use Motion, but mostly for credits and and motion. Uh, I would never use it as a video editor. Uh, in terms of graphical animation, mate, it's powerful. It's way powerful. Oh, absolutely. It's crazy good. I just, I've always needed like Final Cut to it's, actually edit the video. It's the equivalent of a $500 piece of software. And I think if you compare it to things like After Effects, which, you know, as we know, you've got to pay a hefty sort of amount every month for, um, you know, you own this product for 49 quid. And if you're a business, that makes perfect sense. And as I said, there's plenty of tutorials oh. online to, to get you up to speed on this. And Apple still. I was updating it, which is really cool, 4K support come recently. Um, and it's always supporting all the latest cameras. There's never any problem of importing your footage and putting those things that I've laid on top. Um, I just just to have, I've always been a, a champion of the software. And I uh, even met the guy who wrote the manual on, on the whole thing, uh, Mark Spence. He's got a great um, channel where he kind of shows you how to get, get started on that as well. Um, it's just a great app. And that money is just a steal. Sorry, you can't see my feed. No, it's all right, mate. Well done. Thank you. Um, uh, Brett, what have you got for us, man? Uh, does mine have to exist yet? No. Okay. I, I pick Amazon Prime on Apple TV. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that. Cannot wait for Prime that. video, I should say. Um, Bruh. Yeah, that is. I, I've, I've had Prime video for years, and I've always had to flip over to a Roku to watch anything, and it became so inconvenient that I just haven't and having it on the apple tv especially integrated with the tv app then the tv app might actually be useful to me um that'd be cool yeah 
Oh my god, I can't wait, right? I can't believe we forgot about that today. That was <laughs> epic news. It was. I mean, I, it's, uh, there's a bit of me that no, I didn't cover it because I thought it's overdue and they shouldn't get any publicity for something they should have done two years ago. <laughs> sure. No, you know what I'm saying. It's also, like, it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. not an Apple improvement so much as it's uh, one of the final holdouts of streaming video coming back to Apple TV. So I'd say it's an Amazon improvement. But yeah, yeah, it's late, but it's not too little. I can understand why it <laughs> didn't happen because of, 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 you know, licensing and all that kind of shite that goes on. But it should have happened two years ago, which is why, why I didn't cover it in news. But I totally second the fact that it is an awesome, awesome. Uh, development can't get here fast enough can't no absolutely i definitely want it uh my cool thing is uh an audiobook that's available through ibooks if you really want it and it's um uh it's alex uh alex belos's uh adventures in numberland uh and it's brilliant it's it's really just kind of a it's not a historical book about numbers but it talks about how numbers influence our life how they're used in the modern world and also how they're used in ancient cultures and undiscovered cultures. And there's a great bit right at the start that goes on about how um, an Amazon rainforest tribe um, use numbers. And it's just, you kind of think, well, I, you know, I couldn't live like that. But actually when he explains how they use it, it's totally logical. Um, and basically there's, there's, an, there's a, uh, a tribe in the Amazon rainforest who have a number for one, a number for two, and then they have a number for lots. And that's it. And everything beyond two is lots. Um, but if you go back through human history, you know, you kind of laugh at that a little bit and see it as underdeveloped. But if you go back to through human history and through trials with babies and through other stuff, um, uh, why did the Romans stop at three and give you one V for four? And the answer is because people started to struggle to separate II, II, instead of III for the third. So when three and four were next to each other, they couldn't tell that four was four and three was three. So it was far easier to put one V in because that was separated it from the uh, the lines. So at a fundamental level, a human being doesn't recognise tally particularly well until it goes to five. There you go. It's a really good book. It's, it's I, I don't know if I've sold sense. it. I didn't. I don't know if I've sold it there, but it's brilliant. It's it's how numbers influence our current thinking, the universe, and how they inter, uh, you know influenced in the past. It's brilliant, brilliantly, brilliant, brilliantly done. Because it raises loads of questions. Like, so, you know, if, if the stuff that went out in, in, uh, in Voyager about, you know, we find a new uh, species and we tell them that we understand maths. Well, actually, according to this tribal rainforest, the only thing that they know about maths is one, two, and more than. And that's it. But if you get children under the age of five and show them 75 dots and 80 dots, they can tell you which is 75 dots and which is 80 dots. They can see a difference in the amounts of. So it, sh it reinforces the ability that after a certain point, you don't need anything other than more than or less than. It's great. Dude, it's that's really, crazy. It's a really good book. I haven't sold it very well there, but I'm promising you, you will, not, um, uh, you will not see numbers the same way once you've started listening to this, even just two chapters in. It's brilliant. Really, really good. And thanks also to... Um, I can't remember who was it that helped me. Um, I think it was Tom, but uh, in the Slack room, he uh, he helped me with the, the download. Like uh, the 100 megabyte limit has got to go on Apple. Why on earth it's still there, I never know. But the 100 megabyte limit for downloads on iBooks is just draconian and stupid in the extreme. Sort it out. That's crazy. What was we... the name of the book again? Uh, Adventures Alex's Adventures in Numberland by Alex Bellos. Hey, I'm in there. Well worth listening to, and it's it's a long book as well. It's like twenty odd hours, so it's well worth it. Uh, where can we get a hold of you, Doc? Uh, you can find me all over the internet at Doc Rock. That's D O C R O C K. The the Twitterverse, the Instagramverse, Face Space, my book, Book Face, whatever. I'm fi you find me that way, and then uh, on this very network, making trouble to you. Excellent, mate. Thank you, uh, Adam. Where are you, sir? You can find me over at MacCast.com, MacCast on iTunes, MacCast on uh, almost all the social medias, and at the iOS show at the iOS show.com. Cheers, man. Uh, Mr. Rickards. Hello, James. Hello, James. He's gone. 
He can't be found. He can't be found. You can get James at James Records. And he's also in... Uh, oh, come on, you tosser. <laughs> I've got to do his payoff bit, and I've been thrown up now. You can find him at Renderbots, uh, R-E-N-D-E-R-B-O-T-Z, because his day job is rendering 3D video and, and animations and that kind of stuff. So give him a check out. Uh, <laughs> it's James404, says Deep Bad. Yep. Um... Uh, and uh, where can we get a hold of you, Brett? Uh, TT Scoff everywhere. Uh, I blog at brettterpstra.com. And uh, you can find my podcast on esn.fm. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, my name's Ewan Rankin. You can get me at Ewan Rankin on Twitter. Uh, don't forget to check your PayPal account. Don't forget to come to the bash if you possibly can. And we'll see you next week uh, for the Mac Show as normal on the Friday. Um, uh, big show is at 8 tonight. Oh, yes. Thanks for listening.